The offseason just got very interesting for the Seattle Seahawks. Is it a rebuild? Is it a retooling, a restart? Whatever it is, we've got you covered with everything going on around the Seattle Seahawks. So if you have not already, subscribe. Let's get to 25,000 subscribers. We are less than 500 away. If you want free updates on the Seahawks, this is your one-stop shop. As promised, today's video, Russell Wilson replacements. The former franchise QB is now in Denver. Bye, whatever, later. And now Seattle's got to figure out the most important position. And I think they could go any direction here. I think there's a lot of different routes Seattle could genuinely explore. We'll break down draft options this year, trade options, free agency options. Maybe, by the way, it's kind of my suggestion, maybe Seattle doesn't commit and invest heavily into the spot this year. Maybe you do what you did the last time you won your title. You build the rest of the roster up first. You figure out your trench play, which has been an issue for a couple years. You re-sign some key players. And you maybe you sign a veteran. Maybe you trade for a cheaper veteran. But you don't necessarily go all in on one QB the way I had suggested you do so with Russell Wilson. So because of that, maybe you just wait a little bit. And next year's draft class looks pretty good from that perspective. There's a couple of exceptions maybe you could make to go all in with, but I want you right now to make your early prediction. Week one, snap one of the season on offense for Seattle. Who is the starting QB? This is going to be the pinned comments on today's video. Who starts week one for the Seahawks? So we get the ad break on YouTube, take advantage of it. While the ad plays, head down there and let me know. All right, first up on my list, we're not going to spend that much time on it, the internal options, two guys who make sense for Seattle. First up is the good one, the better one, Drew Locke, or as I will continue to call him, Tank Commander Drew Locke. Uh, he's not, not good. I've watched him play in Denver. He's not your franchise QB, but you could maybe backdoor into a couple wins, like Denver certainly did the past couple years with him at charge, so... If that's like your worst case option, okay, the worst case ends up being your bad and you get a high draft pick next year. Also on the team, Jacob Eason. He's not good. He's just not. Like I didn't like him coming out of Washington. I don't think he reads the, f the field very well. He's got the big arm, big size. I know I, if he's starting games, it's, it's probably not a good thing in Seattle. All right, one of the juicier sides. Trade candidates now for Seattle. Now remember, draft capital matters when it comes to acquiring players. We just saw Carson Wentz, LOL, get traded for two-thirds. It could be a second and a second-round pick swap. Now, they got two first-rounders next year. That is noteworthy, and five picks now in the top 107 this year. So from no draft capital to a decent amount of draft capital. And it would require a lot, probably more than what Seattle just gave up to get the guy that I know many of you guys have interest in. That's Deshaun Watson, the Houston Texans' former franchise QB. Now, Pro Football Network's Aaron Wilson, who once was a Texans beat writer, says he expected expects the Seahawks to explore Watson trade scenarios. However, at this point, there's nothing imminent. There's nothing, you know, about to break. That's that's not where that process is at. It sounds like more it's at the well. We trade away Russ. Let's see what's going on with Deshaun Watson for the first time since you know we need a QB finally. In the end, you got to wait. You can't trade for, Russell, for Deshaun Watson right now. You cannot trade for somebody who is potentially on the verge of being indicted by a grand jury for sexual assault. You can't do that. That's a terrible idea for your organization, for a guy that, for all you know, is going to be in jail or getting suspended. It's, it's a bad process. So you have to wait for the legal stuff to get cleared first. In the event it gets cleared, and he's innocent and all that stuff, Oh, he's good. Deshaun Watson is a franchise QB. We can go back and forth as to where he ranks among franchise guys. Is he 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever. He is a franchise QB you can win a Super Bowl with, and he's young. This would, in theory, be your QB for the next 10-plus years. Hopefully things end a little bit better than the way things ended with Russell Wilson. So what do you guys think? Should Seattle trade for Deshaun Watson? Type in Y for yes, they should, N 
therefore, no, they should not. Let me know what you guys have to say in the comments. All right, more trade candidates here. Jimmy Garoppolo of the San Francisco 49ers. He might end up in Indy, and maybe the Niners wouldn't want to trade Jimmy G to a intra-division rival. That makes sense. It's understandable there. You probably give a second-round pick for him, maybe restructure his deal. Talent-wise, I think he's one of the better ones out there. It's not a great grouping right now with, you know, Russ and Rodgers off the list. How about Derek Carr? He is now suddenly the worst QB in the a, uh, AFC West, which isn't fun for the Raiders, in the last year of his deal. Also wants a big-time contract. You add Derek Carr to the Seattle Seahawks roster, I think you could contend for a playoff spot and probably for several years. The question is, is the rest of your roster good enough right now? And do the Raiders even want to trade him away? The same is true. Kirk Cousins, who I think would be a good scheme fit for what Pete Carroll wants to do on offense. He doesn't turn the ball over that much. He like to run the football in Minnesota, and I think that's going to be a big deal in Seattle with Pete Carroll still in charge as well. Cousins is expensive, though. $45 million cap charge for the Vikings. $35 million if the Seahawks were to require him without Minnesota eating any money. Decent name to explore, but again, is that really you know, being the, is he really the guy for your franchise? I'm not so sure. The one that I'm going to go with scares me is Sam Darnold. If you watch our chat sports coverage on, on just the chat sports channel for the NFL, you know I think Sam Darnold sucks. He's never been good in the NFL at any point, but he keeps getting chances because he was the number three overall pick, blah, blah, blah. When the Russell Wilson rumors first started last year, a year ago in 2021, Pat Leonard, the New York Daily News uh, reporter, mentioned this, that Seahawks coach Pete Carroll has a high opinion of Sam Darnold and could end up trading for the Jets QB if Seattle deals Russell Wilson, a league source told the Daily News on Monday. Keep an eye on Seattle for Darnold, the source said. Now, of course, that did not happen. Sam Darnold got shipped off to the Carolina Panthers, and he sucked again. He's not good. He's not good, guys. He's a bad QB. He's never been good in the NFL. There's way too much sample size Four years now of Darnold being, wow, he's not a franchise QB, to think it'll be different this time. And yet I am worried Seattle would acquire him. Now, if you have a day three pick for Darnold, I can live with that. That's fine with me. But if you're giving up capital that says this is our franchise QB, you're going to be disappointed. Now, if you guys love the Seahawks, make sure you are subscribed. I think tomorrow... There's some draft targets for you guys on the Seattle Seahawks with a first-round pick now in tow. So if you haven't already, subscribe. Free videos every single day right here on Seattle Seahawks Today. Don't delay, guys. Hit that big red button right now. Let's go to the draft side of things. And is round one an option for Seattle? You kind of run into this issue, right? It's either round one, pick nine, or if you take someone round two, round three, you're not really committing to them if they don't wow you in year one because you might have only pick next year, and then are you going to move on? So some names to keep an eye out for. The, the big five at QB. Malik Willis, first up here. If you want the upside, this is your option. Big arm, awesome athletic ability, and reportedly has impressed well uh, in his combine meetings. I think it makes perfect sense for Seattle to bring him in for an official 30 visit. However, he's raw. This, we, we talk about Malik Willis because it's such a bad QB class, as if he is a surefire first-round pick. Last year, he would have been QB6 for most people. And this is a QB, by the way, who I like. He's my QB1, but had six touchdowns, six interceptions for 52% completion percentage in his last four games this year. He was not good. The upside is still there. And if you just want to say, screw it, we'll gamble on it, Okay, I understand that, but you got to commit to him for more than just a year or two. He's going to need time. On the other end of the spectrum is Kenny Pickett, the Pitt QB. Maybe not the best name for a QB with Pickett, but whatever. Tiny hands as well. Pickett is a higher floor prospect. He's a bit more advanced, a bit more polished. I think he comps more favorably to a Teddy Bridgewater, who I like. By the way, we'll talk about Teddy in a little bit, but... I don't know if he's your top 10, top 15 QB on his rookie contract. And for Seattle, is that what you want? 
Now, you probably saw the photos of Matt Corral speaking with Pete Carroll at the Combine, just in the stands as Pete Carroll hung out by Lane Kiffin. I, I could see the Seahawks liking Matt Corral a lot. He's not the biggest guy. He did bulk up for the Combine, has some injury problems, has been banged up a lot. He's quick. Quick, quick reads in terms of the offensive style. It was RPOs, play action, and single read vertical shots for the most part there. Quick release, though. Good athlete. Solid arm as well. Corral intrigues me, but God, I don't want to spend a top 10 pick on him. If you can get him in round two, I am intrigued at that point. Also like Desmond Ritter in round two. All these guys have second round grades from me, except for the guy we're about to get to here in a little bit. The, the fifth of the, I should say, big six uh, I'll, I'll, I'll mention. Desmond Ritter, Cincinnati. I think he's a smart football player. Very smart player. I, I like his, his, his instincts. There's still some inconsistency. I don't know how much better he's going to get in terms of his just missing throws. But, again, round two, I like it. I'll group Carson Strong and Sam Howell together. For me, it's a second, third round grade for Howell, a third round grade for Strong. Howell's got the arm. Reminds me of Baker Mayfield a little bit, so hey, maybe that's a, a player you want to go get there. Strong's medical is a massive red flag. His knee is not that right, and that's going to be a potential issue for a lot of NFL teams. So who's your favorite QB prospect? MW for Malik Willis, KP for Kenny Pickett, MC for Matt Corral, DR for Desmond Ritter, CS for Carson Strong, and if you want to write an SH for Sam Howell or any other QB, do so right now in the comments. So we've gone trade, draft. Well, now it is free agency time for Seattle, and it's it's a bad grouping. Let's run through these names. We'll go a little bit quicker here. Teddy Bridgewater, stopgap QB. He's not your franchise guy. Loved him out of Louisville. The knee injury kind of stunted the development, I think. But I like Bridgewater. But he's you know you would just have Bridgewater and Locke, and now you're Denver. And we know how that went well, last year when they have a better supporting roster around their new QB. How about Jameis Winston, the wee baby Jameis? Eh, you know. <laughs> Cut down on the interceptions. Under 60% completion rate, though. Kind of overlooked last year for the Saints. Whatever. Stopgap option. Marcus Mariota could come closer to home if you want to go that route. Sure. Uh, dual threat, you know, mobile ability there. I don't hate that idea. As a stopgap, like if you wanted to draft Malik Willis, sign Mariota, okay, I could get on board with that. A lot of buzz on Mitchell Trubisky going to the Giants, by the way, which, okay. We all went, by the way, from Mitchell Trubisky being, yeah, he's not a starting caliber QB. He's got to go be a backup somewhere. To, after 43 passing yards, he's going to start again. I don't really get it. Feels like we're just doing the whole thing of, well, he was an early round draft pick, therefore he's still good. And I, I don't like that mindset. How about Cam Newton? Um, he's not prime Cam, not close to it, but, I mean, I, I thought he was a little bit better than Sam Darnold, honestly. So he's a free agent. Maybe, maybe you go that route. Andy Dalton, still a, a solid veteran backup QB. That's just kind of what he is at this stage. The Beard, Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think he might retire coming off that bad hip injury, but as a veteran... Could do a lot worse there. I think some of those guys, at least better, are better than Drew Locke and certainly Jacob Eason. So what's your preference then for QB1? Type in T for go trade for somebody, D for you want to draft a kid, or F for you want to sign someone in free agency.